Hi, I'm James, and today I am starting on a build for my own personal home server. And this is going to be replacing a old Intel uh, Sandy Bridge i7 2600T system, or 2600S, which I've had running for a number of years now, in fact almost a decade. Um, and so it is time to refresh this. And one of the things this always had is a DQ67 board with Intel's vPro uh, and remote management. And I want to build a more modern replacement for it to take over all the functionality and the option for future expansion, um, design better support for virtual machines and so on, for taking on tasks as I need to do them in the future. So what we have here is most of the equipment except for the case that we have assembled for this job. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a run through of what we've got. Uh, the core of the system is this, which is the ASRock Rack X570D4U motherboard. Uh, this is really the most interesting bit as it's um, a relatively specialist board supporting the AMD Ryzen AM4 based processors but with a built-in BMC which is ASRock's own chip I believe so we get full remote management of this board uh, even more advanced than sort of the remote KVM functionality on that old Intel board I have. So paired with that we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5700G. Now this is a 8 core uh, 16 thread processor running at up to 4.6 gigahertz with built-in graphics so I don't need a separate graphics card for this system. This is probably overkill for the actual use of the system as it is now but I want the option of expansion in the future. Memory is non-ECC DDR4-3200 um, registered and ECC memory is not supported by these Ryzen 7 APUs. I believe the Pro version of them does, however it's not something that I am too concerned about in this build. For storage we have Samsung 980 250GB SSDs. Uh, these are only PCI Express 3.0, this board does support 4.0 um, and that again is a future upgrade potential um, but I didn't have the requirement uh, for that kind of performance. These are still very good SSDs on their own and an order of magnitude uh, higher performance than the SATA drives in the existing server I have. For mass storage we have 4TB WD RED plus drives so uh, avoiding I think is the uh, SMR uh, type drives by going with the plus and then we have a be quiet pure power 400 watt uh, pure power 11 400 watt power supply this is a 80 plus gold power supply uh, so pretty high efficiency not the absolute highest but should be fairly strong um, I didn't work out whether the they do a 300 watt version of this which should be more than adequate for the power draw of this system they do a 300 watt version of this power supply, uh, which may have been more suitable, but the efficiency is only rated um, 80 plus bronze. Now, because of the way efficiencies work with the percentage load, it may actually be the best choice for this, um, but just with stock at the time I was ordering, I ended up going with the 400. And we also have a Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 cooler. Um, this processor does actually come, I believe, bundled with a heatsink. However, as this system is going to just be churning away for years in the corner of my office, I wanted to try and get it as quiet as possible. So having a very sort of over spec cooler is not a significant cost, but hopefully should give benefits in just keeping the system very quiet regardless of load. So the first component that we are going to look at is really the hub of the system and that is the ASRock Rack X570D4U motherboard. Now considering this is easily the most expensive motherboard I have uh, ever bought, you do not get a lot in here. Uh, this is a £340 motherboard and you get for that a SATA cable, your IO back panel, two M2 retention screws, 
a quick start guide. And then where your money is going, the main board itself. So let's get that unpackaged and take a look. So what are you getting on here for your £340? Well, as we can see, there is nothing in the way of big active cooling or LED lighting. Um, this is the plainest, most boring mainboard you are going to find for that kind of money. Uh, what we do have though is the reason that we have bought it, which is the A-Speed AST2500 chip, which provides us with the BNC remote management tools. Uh, elsewhere we have eight SATA ports, two M2 sockets which support um, PCI Express 4.0. One of the things that put me off the X470 version of this board, despite actually being somewhat cheaper, uh, was the fact that one of the M2 slots on it was only PCI Express 2.0 I believe, and that just felt like to save a small amount of money I was just going to be limiting myself potentially in the future. Um, elsewhere we have a PCI Express 8x slot which is open-ended so you can plug a longer card into there if required along with this PCI Express 16x and a 1x here. Now this may be useful in future um, for running uh, a M2 riser card. Um, I do that in my main workstation where I can hold two drives on the board and then have capacity for an additional four in a riser. So something that's useful uh, potentially then. Other things of note on this board layout which are quite interesting is you have these six pin fan headers here. Um, these are keyed so you can use uh, regular four pin fans. However, some uh, server chassis I believe have a six pin fan header type which you can connect to these. Uh, we also have these uh, SOP16 sockets here for the BMC firmware and the main UEFI firmware. And these can be used with a flash programmer so you can actually remove the flash chips. Um, I'm not going to do that and show that because there are stickers over these so I don't want to break the seals on those. But if for any reason you had to rewrite firmware images and you have a tool like a um, Dediprog, I have one somewhere but I only have it with 8-pin uh, flash connectors so we wouldn't be able to write these chips but you can use those tools uh, or even completely replace the chips in the event of a failure which is a nice touch on a board like this where you may want to prolong the life of it as much as possible. We also have a post uh, debug so we get post codes indicated here so if the system is failing to boot for any reason we can read out the likely cause. Otherwise we have you know fairly standard AM4 socket. The RAM you typically find it around here. The socket is actually rotated 90 degrees so the RAM is towards the top of the board. Um, but what we're going to do is take a look at the back now. Looking at the back panel connectors and we have a COM port and VGA cable uh, connector which again hint at the kind of rack uh, usage of this board uh, and that is even further I you know, continued by this button here, which it would be used to illuminate an LED on the front of the chassis to help you locate the system uh, in a rack environment. You also have, this is the first board I think I've owned, where I have more Ethernet ports than I do um, USB connectors on the back here. A lot of the functionality on this also has front panel headers, so there are even connectors for the VGA where you can connect to the front of a rack chassis. Uh, I'm going to be installing this in a standard ATX chassis just for home server usage um, but you have a lot of this functionality where it can be wired to front panel connectors I believe ASRock do chassis designed for these series of boards that you would typically use these in. There are two 1 gigabit per second Ethernet ports and the third Ethernet port is for the uh, IPMI or the BMC management engine uh, so you would have this one connected to manage the system over and then these ones can be used for the operating system itself as I understand it. Otherwise you have two USB uh, 3.1 Gen 1 so 5 gigabit per second USB 3 ports on the back here. Um, 10 gigabits would be nice but again for my usage not essential uh, one of those will be occupied for a USB drive just for the occasional backup 
and there are otherwise you don't expect to be running a lot of peripherals on a board like this. Uh, obviously you have uh, front panel USB headers I believe as well if you need to utilise those. So into this we're going to be fitting the AMD Ryzen 7 5700G processor. Uh, this is a Cezanne uh, based chip which has eight Zen 3 cores. Um, so the latest or current generation of AMD's Zen microarchitecture. Uh, these have SMT enabled to give you 16 threads in total with a base frequency of 3.8 gigahertz and up to 4.6 gigahertz boost clocks. Uh, this sits within a 65 watt TDP, so pretty efficient on power consumption and hopefully very low on idle as well. Um, and does also have uh, the Vega based 8CU graphics, so actually pretty powerful integrated graphics performance. Not something that we're necessarily going to need on this system, uh, although the video encoding engine may be useful for some of the tasks I plan to use it for. So opening up, and inside we have the processor, including all important uh, 5000 series Ryzen 7 sticker, our installation instructions, and then also the heatsink. Now I'm Unfortunately, I don't know which one this is uh, specifically. It's obviously, again, not one of the RGB ones or anything fancy. So now let's get populating our board. Because uh, this heatsink does not use the standard retention mechanism, we need to remove and fit the mounting kit for the heatsink to that. Um, one thing I hadn't considered when ordering this is actually the rotated socket. So our heatsink is actually going to be blowing air up. Uh, we will see how this works uh, and it may be something I want to swap in the future if it causes any issues. One thing that is a bit interesting on this board is there's actually no designated uh, CPU fan header. So to begin with, I am going to connect it up the top here to fan three, uh, but it is possible that I will actually want to switch to fan one at the bottom of the board here. Now I'll save you the full build video, uh, but the case that we're installing into here is the Corsair Carbide 100R Silent Edition. I picked this again because I want low noise, uh, and also it had the correct number of SATA hard drive uh, slots for the setup that I want to run and some options to expand in the future. This wasn't a particularly expensive case at £55, um, but it does have some sound deadening. I was a little bit disappointed in the kind of lack of cable routing, but I think I managed to get a relatively tidy job in this case. Um, so I hope you found this video interesting. Do let me know if you have and what you'd like to know about this board in particular. I'll be looking at the BMC and uh, the remote management of it in my next video and then the software installation and setup as well. So hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as I post them. Questions in the comments below and like if you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.